Okay, cool. So as I said, we'll, we'll go in order of uh, that the groups are posted up here. Pierre, uh, which group are you in again? Uh, the Nielsen. You're with Nielsen. Okay, so Josh's not all by himself. Excellent. Okay. I'm in Nielsen too. <laughs> sorry? I'm in Nielsen too. Oh, you're in Nielsen too? And your name? Sorry. Stuart. Stuart. Okay, gotcha. All right. Thank you, Stuart. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so uh, um, first up, the digital upstarts. So uh, we've got Amazon and Netflix, I guess. And, uh, so a word about that. I mean, uh, uh, you know, if, if we look at uh, the way that um, electronic media pays for itself, it's usually either by advertising or subscription or a combination of both, right? Um, so your old broadcast networks are ad supported. Uh, your cable um, Comcast services are, you know, a subscription. Um, and uh, so looking ahead at the, you know, at the digital streamers, we're looking basically at companies that uh, are working on the subscription model. Um, obviously, Amazon. Uh, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you're uh, you have access to their library. Um, Netflix, you have to subscribe to Netflix itself. And the trend that we're seeing there is uh, obviously in the last few years is original content, right? Netflix began just with libraries and they did very well with libraries, I think to start with because uh, the, uh, uh, the companies that were supplying them didn't realize how successful they would be. So they had an early deal with Stars where they got the entire Stars catalog for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they figured, what the hell, Netflix? What are they going to do with it, right? But then they made a huge uh, profit off of that. But Netflix has become increasingly kind of vulnerable to uh, uh, having the price for their library raised by the owners of that content that they want to distribute. So their response has been to create original programming. And as Amazon uh, tried to get into uh, the television business too, they, they went ahead with uh, original programming as well. Uh, and uh, so that's a big trend. But let's see what our, our digital upstarts have to say. So uh, uh, it would be Sandra, then Gino, Mason, and Corey. You guys want to come up? Sure. So um, <clears throat> Jody will be picking you guys up with the hand mic. And so um, what she says is to make sure you hold the microphone close to your mouth. But let's, can we all, everyone come up? Yeah, everyone come up. And uh, so uh, let's, let's just line up over here on this side. I'm a very kind of left, left to right type of guy. So uh, uh, everyone over on this side. <laughs> I have this whole thing mapped out in my head. And so your X, your X is right here, OK? And so Jody, I'm sure, is already zooming in to, uh, to get this. Do you want to put your laptop on a chair or something so that you can read it? Is that going to be big enough? Or? Really bad. Okay, Sorry. you can just hold, hold this. No, yeah. not at all. Sorry, it's, no, it's kind know, of awkward. It's like an announcer with their laptop in hand. <laughs> It'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, like the little tablet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, and uh, I guess everything is cool with Jody. Um, so do hold the mic up close and, and hit it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we'll start with that one. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> On October 30th, TechCrunch.com reported that Amazon Studios, Amazon's television development and film distribution division founded in 2010, will be relocating to its new Culver City, California location at the end of this year. Plans are in the works to expand its TV and movie division, adding over 80 jobs in creative, technical, marketing, and legal to the over 700 positions currently filled at the studio's Santa Monica, California location. Amazon Studios continues to expand, and in an effort to remain competitive with Netflix and others, Amazon has increased its investment in streaming. Variety projects its 2018 budget to surpass the $4.5 billion allocated for this year. The new offices will occupy more than 280,000 square feet and house subsidiary companies IMDb, Amazon Video, and Worldwide Advertising. Huge. All right. Let's, let's, let's do applause for the whole group on their yeah. <laughs> I hope that can be heard. Um, and on October 26th, uh, 2017, CNN reported that Netflix is going to spend up to $8 billion in programming next year. According to the article, the company says that it's going to spend $8 billion on uh, new shows and movies in the year 2018, 
which is higher than the 16 billion that Netflix has this year. Um, Netflix is seeking to up the amount of movies, and according to Netflix chief officer Ted Sarandos, um, they plan to release around 80 films next year. And the service also released, recently announced that it was raising its most popular plan by one dollar, um, which I believe was sort of shocking to some people. Um, and along with that, keep your eyes on Netflix and expect some more content in the next year. Ooh. All right. Cool. All right. Adding on to Netflix, uh, they're going to start streaming in 4K for all your favorite programs. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to be a Comcast X1 subscriber and a Netflix subscriber, you'll be able to watch it in 4K. But also, you'll have to buy a new 4K TV, and you'll have to buy a new XG1V4 set-top box from Infinity that they've been working on. But it's all worth it in the end, so if you switch to Comcast, you'll pay for everything. <laughs> Where did that information come from, Mason? It was from broadcastingcable.com. Nice. That's a very good industry source. Yeah, I think. I don't know. It is. Hey, guys. So on uh, November 4th, Los Angeles Times reports that uh, Netflix has uh, more on its hands due to the collapse of the show House of Cards. When House of Cards debuted in 2013, it launched Netflix into a whole new level of Hollywood recognition and acclaim. The show was gaining a lot of traction, along with Netflix pumping $100 million into producing the two new seasons and the series winning Golden Globes and Primetime Emmys. It seemed like, the, uh, it seemed like a pillar of the Netflix library. Unfortunately for the show, in late October, allegations of misconduct started pouring in against the head actor, Kevin Spacey, and the, the head of the show and the staple of the show, Kevin Spacey. Netflix promptly decided to cancel any further production of House of Cards due to such allegations. Although analysts are reporting this may have been an easy decision to cancel the show uh, due to uh, the show being past its prime. The cancellation of the show may have been a blow to, seen by some investors, but many see it as a swift decisiveness to cancel the show as a positive business attribute. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any any thoughts based on what we just heard? Micah? No opening. Pardon me? No opening. Uh, no opening. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> OK. <laughs> true, true. Well, OK, so next, no worries. We were, but uh, uh, we, uh, we got some information. Yes. Uh, however, in terms of the content that people were talking about, not just the four. Jonathan? It was all relative to every company, of course, uh, and I felt like it, it all is affecting those companies in major ways, whether or not it's uh, the expense of uh, getting 4K onto your, uh, being a new 4K subscriber, or to the big blow of a new, uh, one of the greatest shows falling off the map now. So it's just kind of, what does this mean for every company? It's very good stuff. Got you, yeah. So a right uh, yeah, couple of things. Olive? Also, to connect with that as well, it was... Uh, good examples of how it affects consumers, money, more mm -hmm. money, and more outside of the United States, more international. Uh, because Netflix has like a global footprint, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, they often say that Netflix's business model requires like constant expansion. So it's interesting to hear they're going to raise the price by a dollar mm -hmm. to the domestic subscriber base. And, uh, you know, uh, you guys were saying that that's not to everybody's liking, and I'm sure there's going to be a hue and cry about that, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the Kevin Spacey story is, like, front and center because of this huge deluge of, uh, you know, all, all the, the uncovering of all the bad practices that have been going on out there. Corey? He also, he also had a movie in production with Netflix about, uh, was it Gore all? Oh, yeah, that's right. So yeah. they said they're going to cancel. They're not wow. going to go ahead with that either. Okay. Okay. Uh, how about uh, the Amazon news? How do, you, how do you decode that? Just, I mean, you know, maybe just a deepening commitment towards, the, you know, uh, uh, like relocating your office to Culver City in Los Angeles, you know, where the movie yeah, production came. Yeah, they kind of like wanted that. They wanted to be closer to Hollywood to compete with Netflix. Yeah. Because they wanted to establish some sort of a connection somehow. I'm sure they have already had a connection to yeah. Netflix because it's not easy to compete with Netflix. 
Yeah, yeah, but I think it speaks to the importance of being in Los Angeles to, to put together those, those types of projects. And just to hear they have, in, did you say 700 employees already? In, in, you know, that just gives you a sense of the scope of, of Amazon Studios, for sure. Um, could I just, uh, like, in my original one, it was a lot longer, um, and I had to kind of cut it up and keep, I actually cut two of my favorite parts out of it that were, I thought were more interesting. Tell us now. Kind of concise. Yeah. But it was really interesting because one of the parts that I really liked that I thought was getting a little off topic and, and keeping it over 12 lines was a part about how Amazon has faced a lot of backlash and like scrutiny in the last year because two of its uh, it top executives have been um, in like a sexual misconduct kind of accusation scandal thing. Mm. So I thought it was really interesting when I heard his about... Um, Netflix being in the same boat with uh, Kevin Spacey. That's such a relevant thing right now, and it's not just a human interest, it's actually affecting business. Yeah. That's like a whole turnover of, of executives and lead actors and stuff. It's actually impacting the industry and the business and the so Yeah. Interesting. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I was a little afraid that like everybody's news item would touch on that scandal somehow, <laughs> some way or the other. I mean, it's not, it's, it's worthy of of our attention for sure, for sure. Um, and it's just interesting, like you say, I mean, I mean the business is gonna change probably, you know, in, in response to this, you know? yeah. Okay, well, that was cool. Uh, could we have up the our Disney group, which I guess is JP and Richard, right? And then I'm also in as well. Oh, you are? Okay, well, come on up, everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we're going. Ah, I skipped over. Yes, okay. Comcast, NBC, Universal. Sorry. So, John, Daniela, Jonathan. Okay. So, we're doing uh, Comcast, NBC, Universal. And uh, uh, on March 6, 2017, TechCrunch.com reported that Comcast, NBC, Universal is launching an accelerator called Lift Labs. Um, Comcast will run the accelerator in partnership with Techstars, um, a worldwide entrepreneur network that has worked with other media companies such as uh, Disney. According to a Comcast spokesperson, Comcast Cable and NBC Universal will work together to target startups in media, entertainment, and connectivity. This shows Comcast and NBC Universal's desire to help outside companies bolster its media empire, whether it's funding new content or ways to connect. Um, Sam Schwartz, Comcast Cable's Chief Business Development Officer, goes on to say Comcast was a startup more than 50 years ago in Philadelphia and we understand the importance of entrepreneurialism to help drive growth, innovation, and the economy. Instead of being content to just create content, connections, and develop their own media empire from within, Comcast and NBC Universal is incorporating other companies uh, to symbiotically develop new ideas, and I think that's pretty cool. According to the article, applications for the First Lift Labs Accelerator will open on January 8th next year. All right. Right after, the, right after the release of the second season of the popular Stranger Things on Netflix, This Is Why I reported on October 31st that Comcast introduced Netflix in 4K on Xfinity X1. Um, Comcast Cable, one of the largest video internet and phone providers to residential customers under the Xfinity brand makes a big move and joins the other platforms like Chromecast Amazon, and Amazon Fire TV in making 4K streaming available for net Netflix. These are big news for Xfinity customers with a Netflix subscription and with 4K available X1 devices, since they will have seamless access to the whole Netflix catalog and enjoy all it can offer and the greatest quality, along with the live on-demand DVR and web programming that comes with their TV subscription. <clears throat> Good evening, and welcome to Industry Tech News. My name is Jonathan Barton, and here are tonight's top stories. Variety reported on October 16th of this year that media giant NBC Universal and social media company Snap, of Snapchat fame, has created a Hollywood studio to produce new content centered around the app. The currently unnamed studio looks to be making short-form comedies and dramas while working with a handful of creative partners. The joint venture has already assigned a deal with two new indie filmmakers, Mark and Jay Duplass, who are most notably known for their work on the TV show The League, as well as the movie The One I Love. 
On average, Snapchat has an average of 173 million active daily users, which is something NBC Universal would like a, their own share in. Whether or not the content will only stay up for 24 hours leaves it remains to be seen. Up next, a new study shows that why your significant other wants you off your phone so bad. <laughs> Any hard copies? Sure, sure. I love hard copies. But, but uh, turn it in within a week on Canvas. Uh, for, for your uh, wow, so that was really interesting. Um, first off, clearly it's, it's, uh, it's important that everyone's moving to 4K. I mean, we heard it again in, in, this, uh, in this story. Uh, <clears throat> Um, how many people would be tempted to go to Comcast and, and get that new subscription service in order to get 4K? I see heads shaking. I, I wouldn't, yellow. but I already have it. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You already have it. But if I didn't have it, I would. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't think I would. I have it, but I can't use it. Because you don't have a 4K TV yet? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yet. Never, never. I, I don't Not know. Yet. It's gonna happen eventually. Yeah. Eventually. I think it's Just pretty. Like it, HDTV then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's exciting for us because I mean we're moving to 4K and and teaching people you know the advantages of 4K and stuff. So it's uh, I don't know. I'm surprised it's happening so quickly mm -hmm. in a commercial sense. I knew that Netflix was making 4K available, but I thought. That was just, you know, uh, what do we call it when, you know, you've got on your TV a, a, an internet connection without running through a set-top box? You remember? Smart, Smart television. television. Smart television or over the top. Over the top. Yeah, remember OTT? So also, Rick, um, with the 4K, with the TV, you'll also have to have, like, a, I think it's 25 megabit mm -hmm. connection speed. And if you even have somebody else in your For all of that data to move? You don't have yeah. that. So yeah. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And I guess the, the other thing that I found interesting was, I mean, just two, three years ago, the big news was, you know, and Comcast and Netflix in a bit of a fight about, you know, Comcast uh, um, uh, complaining that a third of their traffic was Netflix at particular peak moments. And so they were complaining, you know, how come Netflix, you don't pay us more to, to deliver all of that content to our subscribers, you know? And so Netflix, uh, um, you know, then putting dedicated servers close to Comcast head ends and other cable providers so that they would, you know, they, that, that they didn't have to stream so many bits of video so far over the internet. They would put their own servers much closer to the, the, the uh, ISP, you know, distributions to kind of solve that problem, I guess. And now to hear them partnering so friendly. It's like, oh, how quickly we forget <laughs> how, how big enemies we were at, at a certain time. So uh, yeah, all interesting stuff. And wow, Snap uh, collaborating. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so who is it, the Duplass brothers? Yeah. yeah, 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 they're working together. I mean, they're, they're one of the uh, creators working with it. But yeah. it's just this new studio in Hollywood now that's going to be making content for Snapchat. And uh, don't know what it's going to look like. It'd be interesting. interesting. Yeah, what kind of format? Do you think maybe it'll be shorter? Yeah, something pieces? 10 minutes or less, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of questions in the air about it. Right. I guess the Duplass brothers are already sort of known for promoting new talent and stuff mm -hmm. in interesting ways. Um, okay, cool. All right, well, now it really would be time for Disney <laughs> to, to come <laughs> up. Good afternoon, and welcome to BCSD 100 News at noon. Today, Today's news, we will be talking about the happiest place on earth and their, moves, and their move towards online streaming. On October 8th, the New York Times reported that Disney announced a lead towards live streaming by introducing two new online streaming services. While one of the streaming services is going to focus on Disney, Disney movies and television shows made by company it owns like Pixar, Marvel and Lucasfilm, film, the other online services will, will, be, will fo be more focusing on live streaming of sports which will be carried by Disney's latest and greatest purchase, ESPN. Both of these online streaming services is going to be built by BAMTech, which on the outside looks like a little known company in this highly competitive online streaming industry, but is certainly not a weak one. Mr. Eager, chief executive, of German, ch executive and chairman of Disney, is confident that BAMTech is the company that will lead them to glory. From BAMTech's early growth in streaming, vid uh, streaming video business with the major baseball advanced media to developing advanced technologies for giant companies like WWE, 
Fox Sports, PlayStation, VUE, Hulu, and HBO, just to name a few. Bamtech has always rose to the occasion and delivered good results. But is it the company that will help Disney make a major impact on this huge online streaming market is yet to be seen. <laughs> Although Bamtech has a good start till this point, just being good might not be enough. When it comes to online streaming services, the competition is fierce, with companies like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and HBO Now, who already have a firm grasp on consumer, it will not be an easy task for Bamtech to carry on the Disney legacy. Although Disney's coalition with other television companies and their not so successful attempt to introduce their version of mobile streaming called TV Everywhere, which was introduced in 2010, didn't meet its mark, Mr. Mayor, Disney's chief strategist, has nothing but optimistic thoughts that Bamjik is the company for them when he said, that's going to be a massive business and Bamjik is to be a massive winner in, it, in an interview. While Bamjik looks like the company that will take Disney to new heights in online streaming businesses, will its impressive credential be enough to overcome the high expectation that Disney and people all around the world have from it? Will Bamjik outclass the its competitions and mark a huge victory for Disney or will it be overwhelmed and crushed by the established giants of the online streaming industry. Granting all this, granting all this, road ahead for Bamtech and Disney appears to be unknown, but they seem to be all set and ready to add the Disney app on your mobile devices. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. That was a, a feature. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to KCSF News. I'm JT Mackey and here's the top story. Nice. On October 25th, Entertainment News website Deadline reported that Disney Channel would feature its first openly gay character on a season premiere of its hit TV series, Andy Mack, on October 27th. The sitcom follows the title character, a 13-year-old girl, who and her friends as they try to figure out who they are. On the series premiere, Andy realizes the woman she had known as her sister is really her mother. As the series progresses, both Andy and her male friend, Cyrus, realize they have feelings for a boy named Jonah. On the second season premiere, viewers will watch Cyrus struggle to tell his girlfriend about his sexuality. Prior to this, their announcement, Disney Channel discussed the storyline with various episodes, excuse me, various experts and organizations to gain inspiration for the episode. This is a huge step for Disney Channel, since viewers usually associate the network with traditional family values. Sarah Kate Ellis, the president and CEO of GLAAD, says, Television reflects the real-life world, and today that includes LGBTQ, T, LGBTQ youth who deserve to see their lives depicted on their favorite shows. This coming out story allows Disney Channel to spread a message of tolerance and further adapt to the modern world. Additionally, this will inspire the network to become more inclusive in character development. All right, thanks for that, JP. Uh, I just want to preface this by apologizing to the audience. Uh, my tuxedo is getting dry cleaned. <laughs> um, on October 23rd of this year, the New York Times reported the uh, partnership between Barstool Sports and ESPN had abruptly ended. Uh, this partnership lasted a mere 10 days and one episode. Two vastly polar opposite sports media companies. ESPN, the mainstay of sports uh, media in this country for years, made this partnership to boost low, uh, recent low ratings and Barstool to appear to a wider audience. As you may know, Barstool Sports is a small sports media company started in Boston, growing in popularity recently for its controversial and unfiltered take on sports, much different than ESPN's politically correct nature. Some of uh, Barstool's recent endeavors include distributing thousands of t-shirts at the Patriots home opener this year, depicting Roger Goodell, the NFL conventioner, uh, in a sports costume, or sorry, in a uh, clown costume, uh, red nose and all, and getting guests on, on their... Uh, on their trivia show to put globs of chewing tobacco in their mouth when answering questions incorrectly. <laughs> uh, the straw that broke the camel's back of this partnership was recently unearthed audio and tweets by Barstool employees making extremely disrespectful comments about Samantha Ponder, a host on ESPN's Sunday NFL pregame show, and her children. Mm. The takeaway from this story is that ESPN was so desperate for ratings they were willing to make a deal with a company that openly criticized their company and countless employees in their past essentially making a deal with the devil. And sometimes when you make a deal with the devil, you get burned. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. There we go. So, 
Very interesting. Two two stories about content there. I, I love the uh, the desperation that we're feeling coming out of ESPN uh, in in your story. And JP, I love the idea that you know the the, the arbiter of the mainstream. You know, Disney Disney Channel has finally gotten around to you know opening up their their repertory of, of characters and, and shows to you know encompass what everybody knows is is people's experience. So those are cool. And, and Richard, I think you know, I mean, the in terms of business uh, developments, uh, of course, Disney's Disney's uh, choice to to stream both sports and also the hugely profitable Pixar, Lucasfilm, Marvel catalog themselves. You know, that's obviously going to affect Netflix and what Netflix has in its library in a big way. So, so uh, that's, that's big news there, too. Um, the, is it the, so your story was specifically about the streaming service that will be... Uh, okay, all right. And it touches on just the, the massive issue of... of how, how everyone's turning to streaming now to kind of monetize their libraries and, uh, and doing it themselves versus, you know, licensing it through Netflix, and, uh, in part, I guess, to complete with, compete with Netflix. Awesome. Okay. Um, did you guys get anything out of that that you want to talk about as well, Disney style? <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting that ESPN still, like, struggling, still trying to figure it out, you know? Yeah, I mean, in part, I guess, because of again the cord cutting, you know, the, the loss, the loss of luster that any cable network would have, just especially ESPN, which, you know, was just, uh, it, it was in everybody's basic cable service, yeah, you know, and that that was just made it a rock solid investment. But it apparently is like the only major piece of Disney that's losing money now. Yeah, Stuart. I would say that has a lot to do with this crap programming. Yes, ESPN. Do you think Barstool was going to raise that up? Or? No, I just mean they could do a lot better with acquiring different, like, sports and actual, like, sports insight. There's just none of it. It's all hot takes and, and irrelevant crap. Interesting. It's, it's a bad service. Huh. It, did it get worse over time, or is it just... I mean, we all over the last that. few years, it's just kind of turned into... It's not a quality program to watch for actual insight into a sport, you know? Okay. According to ESPN, World Series of Poker is every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Okay, well, that's interesting. So it might not just be a core cutting, but also just a decline in, in the quality of stuff. Take it off, Fisha? I am taking off. I'm sorry I have to go. Thank you, guys. It was really interesting. Good luck to you guys. Hope to see you around. Appreciate right. it. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Would, would uh, NFL Network be a competitor with them? Well, certainly head to head in streaming, but yeah, also, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So I guess that's, I mean, that's all people, most people, most Americans care about. <laughs> this is right, football, right. You know? do, so. we, don't, we don't really care where it comes to us. We just want the. Yeah, the and I know and NFL Network has a ton of great content, especially watching the, what the players are doing in their offseason. Even even in offseason, you both care about how they're training and everything. The thing about the NFL Network, I think I read, was that they're, like, the NFL makes so much revenue mm -hmm. that since they bought the channel, or they, they broadcast it in a way that they don't have to necessarily make money from profit of the channel, but their revenue, they just pump right into the channel to keep it up. Okay. And they make something like $40 billion in revenue a year or something oh, crazy gosh. like that, so they don't even care. They're just, like, they they're just keeping it alive by revenue from t-shirts and jerseys. Yeah, so that's sort of the way that Amazon can finance anything on television that they make through socks and exactly, yeah. Yeah. And barbecues <laughs> and stuff. Right? Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to compete with that. Right? Yeah. If, if, you're a, if you're a Netflix and that's your only business, it's like mm -hmm. that stuff. and yet they seem, like you guys were saying, billions, you know, $16 billion in investment in television. Where does it come from? God, all over the world. Uh, 21st Century Fox. <laughs> Hello, my name is Olive Rubenstein and I am responding from Cron4 News. 21st Century Fox is a mass media company that is focused mainly engaged in film and TV um, businesses. It was created in 2013 in New York City. Its founder and current executive is Rupert Murdoch. On April 19th, the New York Times stated 
that earlier this April, Bill O'Reilly was pushed out of the Fox News channel. Uh, due to sexual harassment accusations made by several women, this five-star news host was fired. As a journalist and a television host, Bill O'Reilly was with Fox News for 20 years. The five lawsuits were dated back to 2002. Due to all the lawsuits, more than 50% of the O'Reilly Factor sponsors retreated from the show. The O'Reilly Factor was then renamed into The Factor and will air its last episode on April 21st. Bill will be a guest this September to the Fox News channel, The Sean Hannity Show. Mm. Myra, please continue. <laughs> On October 11th, the Daily Telegraph reported that not only Modern Family, but The Simpsons has, has officially disappeared from the 10 network after failed negotiations with Fox. It's been a massive blow for both shows that after more than 25 years on free air TV, they were immediately removed, and it was understood that Fox was not so happy with the amount 10 offered to pay to show contact. Reporters believe that CBS will now take over 10, but arrange arrangements have not been finalized. As a result, network rivals like Channel 9 has now opened up the possibilities to air some Fox shows now that 10 has officially terminated their deal with Fox. And what country is that in? Australia. In Australia. Okay. All right. International news. Thank you. Rupert Murdoch, the name. Dude never dies. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, just got, right. Just buys more and more satellite networks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. So, um, uh, tidbit uh, to um, to be in business in broadcasting in the United States, you have to to own stations. You have to be a United States citizen. So Rupert Murdoch, who comes from Australia and made all his money in uh, newspapers, uh, when he was starting up the Fox network uh, in the 1980s, uh, had to become an American citizen in order to, uh, uh, to, to hmm. buy those stations. Um, and uh, he's, since then, he seems to have been trying to direct the uh, political development of the country. <laughs> so it's, uh, but yeah. Um, any other uh, Fox News up in, yeah? Purely on that anecdote you just said, does that mean the laws are differing in Europe or in Britain where he owns multiple newspapers and Sky and God knows what else? It, I'm sure the laws are different. I'm not really aware of them, but uh, yeah. Uh, and here, those laws about you know ownership, they date way back. So you may not have to be an American citizen to own like a cable network, for instance, or something like that. But to buy like over-the-air television stations, you have to be a you have to be a U.S. citizen. Yeah, I'm sure it's different throughout the world. You know, yeah. Um, <clears throat> just trying to think of other kind of Fox News tidbits. Right. Anybody else aware? Yeah, just of a, um, I was going to say just on a business standpoint, you know, Fox News losing one of their most highest-rated shows and a blink of an eye. I mean, do this very serious things, but uh, it's just like wow, I can't believe. I mean, that's a major blow to a company. Yeah. Just like that, yeah. Yeah. And Olive, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to also bring up uh, that uh, Rupert Murdoch, he uh, got pulled off the air in Britain from uh, Sky TV, which is like the Britain, London's channel, I guess, as Fox News. They got pulled off. Um, so Fox News went off of the Sky TV. Uh, okay, that's interesting because they want to buy Sky TV. Right, and, and they're, they're and apparently they were off uh, the law with how they communicated uh, through the air. That's, that, that's all I could read before huh. I switched to. Okay. Uh, well, building. News Corp, which is the they they hold the newspaper holdings for uh, you know the Murdoch Empire or whatever. Remember, News Corp was uh, caught in a scandal for, uh, uh, they were, uh, um, uh, they were, now I'm blanking on it, they were monitoring the call, so somebody disappeared, right? And they were monitoring the, uh, the, uh, the communications of that disappeared person. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Why can't I remember? Uh, they, they basically were getting access to their uh, um, 
phone message box and stuff. Uh, we'll have to come back to it. Big scandal for News Corp in England. I do remember that. God. And uh, um, so, so uh, the Murdoch family, because his, his kids are poised to take it over, and actually one of the kid who was in charge of News Corp in England moved over to the United States to just kind of was too hot over there after that scandal. Um, so now, here they are. Apparently the younger Murdochs want to turn Fox News from less of a right-wing direction. Uh, but we haven't seen that too much you know so what far. You know what is uh, Disney is trying to buy 21st Century Fox. Is that right? In the last yeah. couple of days. So well, that's interesting. That's kind of in that way. Okay, right. So 21st Century Fox is, uh, well, Jeez. you remember it used to be 20th Century Fox. So that's the film distribution line of it. Yeah. And, and uh, Disney is the most successful uh, company in the film business due to Pixar, Lucasfilm, and Marvel. So, I mean, they may be trying to, like, even increase their dominance in movies. Uh, in terms of, um, uh, you know, remember Fox News is a 24-7 uh, conservative news channel versus the Fox Television Network is a network of local, you know, Fox affiliates with much less of a political slant in their, in their news uh, operation. Uh, but uh, Fox News was the, uh, the product or the brainchild of Roger Ailes, right, who was a, a, uh, a Republican political consultant to Richard Nixon and Reagan in the time. And Murdoch hired him to create Fox News, and he was the, you know, the, uh, the driving force, the true believer, right? So Ailes was kicked out uh, on a sexual uh, harassment <laughs> scandal. Jesus. <laughs> right? They found out that literally like tens of millions of dollars had been paid off in hush money. Uh, and then, so he left and then he died within a year after leaving. Um, so right now, Rupert Murdoch is personally running Fox News editorially, cozying up to the Trump administration. Uh, and then O'Reilly, as you guys reported, uh, turns out he paid off $30 million of hush money to cover up his own sexual abuse scandals. So O'Reilly left, who was a and big actually, star. Actually, uh, there's also just recently, last month, they brought up about another 13 million, also in hush money. Wow. For O'Reilly. Wow. Yes. Jeez. That's pretty expensive, you know, like bottom yeah, line for the company. I mean, it's 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 just revolting behavior. Don't get me wrong, but it's also business-wise, it's a lot of, you know, we're talking like 50 million bucks to cover up all that. Mm -hmm. Frisky guy. You know, well, ales. Uh, you look at these people. It's like, how can they even? Uh, and uh, uh, so, yeah, and, and so the news is also that uh, Sinclair Media, which is a, um, a station ownership group, is, and they beat, recently bought local Fox affiliate KTVU. They seem to be trying to develop uh, a, uh, a very conservative type of news programming as well, maybe going after Fox if they feel that Fox, is, is Fox News is getting a little bit uh, weak uh, in terms of because that is a hugely profitable audience. For decades, it's been the number one uh, cable news uh, outlet. Beats CNN every time. Okay, well, uh, let's move on to Time Warner, and then we'll have national amusements. I think we may get it all in today. If we don't, um, my apologies. We'll have to do some on, on Wednesday. Last Thursday, on November 2nd, the Dow Jones reported the Time Warner Stock dropped more than 3% when the Department of Justice threatened to sue to block AT&T from acquiring the media company for $85 billion. The deal must go through a series of consent decrees with the Justice Department, which is normal for mergers on this grand scale. It was a little over a year ago when the telecommunication company announced that they wanted to purchase parts of Time Warner, which included CNN, HBO, Warner Brothers, and many other prominent channels. Although the Justice Department is considering filing an antitrust lawsuit, no final decision has been made. An analyst at Cohen Research, Doug Crutz, said that it would be unprecedented for the Department of Justice to block a vertical merger, and that the press leak is likely a negotiating tactic by the government, and that the deal is still likely to close. So, All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And can we get up national amusements? So, so that was, uh, no, no, in terms of money, that was uh, our, our biggest story of the day. $85 billion for that merger. 
And uh, I think that um, you're, it's quite reasonable to say that this is standard practice, that uh, the merger is not in danger. Uh, and it's certainly not unheard of that a vertical merger like this would be challenged by the Justice Department. The idea is that you know the government uh, is still sensitive about creating incredibly powerful monopoly companies, and if ATT were to buy Time Warner, they would have a gigantic uh, footprint in, in the cable and satellite businesses, and they will, and they'll probably get to buy it. There's just they're trying to squeeze some concessions out. All right, wow, what a big group. Let me hand it over to Nika. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is KCSF, I'm Nika Bucko. Nice to have you with us. We have a special report on national amusements to get, to you for, get for you tonight. But first, it's brought to you by Arby's. Uh -huh. Arby's, it's technically food. <laughs> <laughs> on October 17th, the New York Business Journal reported that Manuela Her uh, Herzer, a uh, former companion of Sumner Redstone, is suing his daughter, Sherry Redstone, for over $100 million for, uh, using the RICO Act, the um, Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, originally used to pin up uh, organized crime, is now being used and charging Sherry Redstone with wire fraud, mail fraud, bribery, and secretly uh, recording Ms. Herzer. Uh, this is now being used as just another uh, tool in this legal battle over both control of national amusements and uh, the 94-year-old Sumner Redstone himself. Sherry Redstone calls these charges fantastical. Thank you, Nika. I'm Jenny with KCSF. And on July 14th, the New York Times reports Tyler Perry signed a five-year deal with Viacom. Perry agreed to produce original drama and comedy for Black Entertainment Television, BET, and other Viacom networks annually. The contract is active, but filming begins in 2019. This coincides with the contract's expiration with Oprah Winfrey's network, OWN. The deal entitles Viacom to executive and exclusive distribution rights and Paramount Pictures to first look rights on his film concepts. BTIG research media and analyst Richard Greenfield states this is a sign that Sherry Redstone and Robert Akish are here to compete. Sherry is Viacom's current vice chairwoman of CBS's and Viacom's board of directors. Bakish is the up-and-coming chief executive. The field over power has stifled growth. Bakish states, Tyler is a pro prolific creative force, and I'm excited to Viacom's audiences while further cementing BET's position as the leading home for bold, relevant African-American programming and scripted content. It's a loss for Oprah and a gain for Viacom. Thank you. On November 6th, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Paramount Pictures marketing head Megan Culligan has left her job at the struggling movie studio. Culligan's attorney said that she was pushed out because of gender discrimination and she is considering legal action, claiming it is a systemic problem in Paramount. Culligan sent a letter to Paramount to parent company Viacom stating her resignation amounts to constructive termination because of gender bias. Several other female executives have also left Paramount in recent weeks. Culligan's departure marks the latest shakeup at Paramount, shakeup as Paramount chairman Jim Giannopoulos tries to put the studio back on its feet after continuous high profile flops, including Suburbicon, Mother, Ghost in the Shell, and Baywatch. More on to some exciting news. T MTV brings augmented reality to EMA show app. This year, MTV EMA's Europe Music Awards, which takes place November 12th in London, will allow viewers, viewers to live stream performances right from the palm of their hands through augmented reality. According to Deadline Hollywood, the MTV EMA mobile app will allow viewers to interact with objects 
and animations designed to accompany select performances. Carmelina Peruca, MTV's International VP of, International, um, of Digital Content and Engagement says, as the user moves the device, the object appear with 3D uh, rendered objects. Additional features include social media influences to speak with local um, audiences in their native language. For more information, visit their website, www.mtvema.com, or post your experience on Twitter using hashtag MTVEMA17. Great. While we chat, can we get the Nielsen group up just on, on, uh, on deck? Uh, so you caught you caught a little bit of the uh, of the soap opera there with uh, National Amusements, and uh, and Jenny had some of the important background as to what the company actually is. So uh, National Amusements. Oh, you guys owned, can go first. Owned by uh, uh, Sumner Redstone in his mid 90s, um, was uh, a key a key shareholder of CBS, um, Viacom, which is uh, a company that holds many well-known cable networks like MTV, BET, uh, Nickelodeon, and so on and so forth. So uh, again, as we said, due to cable cutting and such. All cable networks have been sort of impacted as to how good they look to investors and such. In addition, um, uh, there was a huge power struggle over uh, who, who would direct National Amusements and CBS and Viacom. CBS is a very solid, profitable company uh, run for decades by Les Moonves, and so they were really not a part of the mess. But everything else was drawn into the battle between Sherry uh, Redstone, Sumner Redstone's daughter, uh, and another group uh, which had the executive up until the time he was ousted less than a year ago, Philippe Del Monde. And uh, um, so the, the kind of the, the amazing thing about this was uh, Redstone at 94 years old was, if you listen to one group, entirely all together in his head. Uh, uh, in love with his girlfriend, uh, Manuela Herzer, and able to make all decisions for the company on behalf, along with Philippe Delmont. Or if you listen to his daughter, he was senile, uh, uncommunicative, and not able, just basically a pawn being used by everybody else. So this went back and forth in court for a couple of years, which the company was tanking while this was happening. Uh, and finally, Sherry Redstone came out on top, and she is now uh, the executive in charge and putting her people in place. And as we saw, Paramount is trying to bounce back from uh, more of the bad stuff that went on at that time. So uh, big soap opera there. Fun. OK, let me turn it over to you guys for Nielsen here. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Pierre Tanai reporting from BCST 100. On October 31st of this year, TechCrunch.com reports that uh, Nielsen Media Research will use GraceNote Smart TV data for ad targeting. As uh, Nielsen continues to expand and build, the company has recently made a giant acquisition and brought the GraceNote's global database and technology solutions company into the family. This merge in companies is huge and they provide their clients with deeper analytics on consumer behavior and insights on audience engagement from discovery to consumption. Kelly Apkarian, Senior Vice President of Product Leadership at Nielsen, explained that the goal is to bring person-level television data to digital marketing and bring the scale to a whole new level. Race Notes, now a uh, Nielsen company, is best known for providing metadata to music services like iTunes and Spotify. It spans across multiple platforms from streaming music services and smart TVs to in-car infotainment systems. Race Note provides reference information for over 12 million movie and television listings and 200 million tracks as well as the infotainment systems and over 75 million automobiles, but they also developed video automatic content recognition technology, which is currently inside of 27 million smart TVs. This allows them to analyze the video image and then determine what you're watching in real time. App Carrion said Nielsen can use GraceNote's unique algorithms and capabilities and intelligence to turn that viewing data into person-based understanding and combine it with data on things like demographics, credit card spending, and online behavior. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> Nielsen, who also provides his clients with analytics, 
that help improve performance. Nielsen, an S&P 500 company, has operations in over 100 countries, covering more than 90% of the world's population. Good morning, everyone. NPR TV critic Eric Diggins reported on October 18th that Nielsen Company can now estimate how many people watch individual shows on Netflix. Um, he also stated that this development, in his, in his opinion and mine, could transform the TV industry. Um, the reason this development could transform the TV industry is the fact that now Nielsen can use the same household, households it samples to create cable and broadcast TV ratings in order to calculate U.S. viewership for programs on subscription-based streaming services. Um, the, f the fact that Netflix ratings have been more or less a secret for so long has drawn criticism from some of the TV industry. Um, those who create original series for the service don't know how big their view viewership is, um, which can make valuing the shows very difficult. Um, Senior VP, uh, Vice President of Product Leadership at Nielsen, Brian Furrer says their information will eventually give the TV industry a better idea of how streaming services are changing how we all watch television. Right on. Uh, it's kind of a response on that last one, actually. Following media market research firm Nielsen Holdings' new announcement stating their plans to introduce data collection on Netflix viewerships and demographics, the streaming service has claimed that the firm's data is inaccurate and does not reflect the viewing of these shows on Netflix. The Nielsen Company, one of the leading mass media market research firms, focuses on accumulating and analyzing television <coughs> ratings and viewership demographics. Nielsen's is famed for its television rating system put into place in the 50s and still in use today, and is tasked with collecting viewership data for all of the United States television programming, made possible by the company's assemblage of over 44,000 homes, which sends such data to the firm. Nielsen's foray into online entertainment is quite anticipated, with the firm even seeing its stock rise 4% after its announcement on October 18th. According to the New York Times Network, allegedly... Hmm. Alle According to New York Times, al networks allegedly were able to finally see viewership statistics for their programs hosted on the streaming service for the first time, data that Netflix has guarded carefully. But in light of recent news, this may no longer be the case. It has been pointed out that Nielsen's collection system for Netflix data is based on audio recognition and that they were not collecting data from smartphone or laptop streaming as well as international viewing. All right, that was great. That was a real, real little controversy brewing there. And uh, so nice, nice back and forth. And, uh, uh, good, good context from Josh, too. So. Uh, uh, responses to that? Any anyone want to put into words just the, the controversy that's going on there? What, what did you think about it? No, well, we're drawing to a close. Maybe I mean, if I if I had to put it into words, I'd say you know uh, it's it's been a bone of contention for the last couple of years. Broadcast television saying, well, you know, our 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 success or failure is publicly documented by Nielsen. Our advertising uh, is is influenced greatly by Nielsen. By you know, it's an open book. How many people watch our shows and stuff? We're competing against Netflix increasingly, where all of this is secret. You know, so the broadcasters are not happy because it's secret. And and there have been, uh, you know, a couple of smaller kinds of research audience research services, which have come out ahead of the you know ahead of Nielsen saying okay we can estimate uh, the numbers for who's watching what show on Netflix and stuff. Clearly Nielsen, you know, they're incredibly paranoid about uh, having their position as the premier rating service for anything challenged. And so here they are. Now they've got a technology to estimate viewership numbers for Netflix. Netflix firing back saying, no, they're not accurate. <clears throat> and also fascinating in what you guys were talking about, Stuart, especially just just pointing out, you know, that the, it's easy enough to say, well, you don't c account for mobile, you don't account for, you know, laptop streaming and stuff, which is huge for Netflix and, you know, minute for broadcasters, of course. And uh, so very interesting that Netflix would continue to defend its position for keeping those numbers in the dark. And again, from what Stuart was saying, think about it. Netflix has to negotiate with. CBS with NBC for those series that go into their library. 
if these you know content owners can say, well, this is huge for you. You you know we you've got a hundred million people watching uh, the Big Bang Theory when it then of course there it's it's a lot harder to negotiate than if those numbers are completely unknown and Netflix is just saying let's make a deal for all your stuff we're not going to tell you how well it does when we buy it we're just going to you know make a deal so uh, obviously uh, you know, a lot of those tensions there really came out well in that in that presentation all right, folks, it's 12.25, so thank you. And uh, if anybody wasn't here but saw us streaming, there is next class in order to get up last minute. Uh, thanks a lot.